President Obama must stop putting pressure on Israel. That was one of the messages emanating from the recent Christians United for Israel conference held in Washington. Two prominent Jewish personalities, one American, the other Israeli, attended that conference. U.S. media personality Michael Medved and his brother John, an international high-tech entrepreneur, said that the influence of COFI, which represents over 50 million American citizens who support Israel unconditionally, is immense. They were speaking to reporter Joel Mowbray for Israel Close Up. One of the things that I always find fascinating is talking to Americans of the left who say, well, how can you possibly work so closely with American Christians because they only support Israel because they think God wants them to, because they think it's in the Bible, because it's part of their belief. Now, let's see, which is more reliable, people who are on your side because they think God wants them to be, or people who are on your side because it's politically to their self-interest? I'll, I'll take people who are sincere believers uh, who believe that uh, Israel, as we believe, is, is God's will, God's stake in history, uh, fulfillment of biblical prophecy, and uh, a uniquely important nation of seven million. I'll take people like that any time. Clearly, there, there are biblical motivations for many of the people uh, who attend Christians United for Israel. But do you think that that is the core of the support that evangelicals hold for Israel? Uh, and uh, to what extent do other factors play a role, such as culture or identification uh, with the morality of the cause of the, the Jewish state of Israel? Christians are uniquely comfortable in the United States of America with distinctions of good and evil. And they understand that there are some conflicts that are not great. They're not, uh, well, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit here, a little bit there. No, they're black and white. That's why they responded to President Reagan. When President Reagan said, Soviet Union, evil empire, a lot of people in the secular world said, oh, no, simple old man, how crazy could he be? Christians applauded because they recognized that sometimes human conflict is good and evil. And the struggle for Jews to live in our resettled homeland versus people who want to utterly obliterate the Jewish presence in the Middle East. That's a struggle of good and evil. The struggle between people who risk their lives to protect children opposed to people who want to kill themselves for the sake of killing children. That's a struggle of good and evil. And that's something that Christians understand much more effectively than secularists. Do you think that the thousands of attendees at the Christians United for Israel conference are having an impact on policymakers? I think they have an unbelievable impact. Um, I was made aware of the national prayer breakfast for Jerusalem and the number of churches who are going to participate on the first Sunday of October this coming year. Do you know how many that's going to be? 300,000 churches so far have signed up. 300,000 churches? I mean, how many people is that going to be? I mean, uh, it could be 30 or 40 million people praying for the peace of Jerusalem. It's an extraordinary army of believers and, and people who are committed to Israel. And I think that the, the, the power of what Pastor Hagee has done here is to mobilize this army and to not just have it uh, express warm feelings or feel positive about Israel, but it takes specific action. And it seems as though, for these people, Israel is an important political issue. It's not just a nice-to-have, it's a must-have. And I think that for this constituency, support for Israel is going to be right up there with the top of their political issues. What limits the impact of KUFI? is the, so far, uh, limited Catholic participation. I missed seeing Roman callers in the, uh, in the audience tonight. If we did see more, we'd have a lot better chance influencing Democrats, who are, after all, right now, the majority in the House and in the Senate, and that makes a huge difference. And if I were to talk about one priority uh, for Jewish people, for Friends of Israel, and reaching out to Christians, it would be directly going for the Catholic community. Taking a sharp turn now, and for the first time ever, the International Gay and Lesbian Travel Association kicked off its annual symposium yesterday in Tel Aviv. The week-long conference brings gay and lesbian travel agents and tourists from around the world to see what Israel has to offer. 
conference is touting Israel's culture and nightlife as one of the hottest and most unique travel destinations for international gay travelers. IBA Sarah Levine asks, what makes Tel Aviv special to the gay traveler? Tel Aviv is doing the absolute right thing, and they're joining the world market in terms of getting gay and lesbian travelers who spend billions and billions of dollars on travel to come and visit. They're starting first with research, then the marketing, and it is an absolutely terrific textbook approach in terms of welcoming gay and lesbian visitors. Do you think the shooting attack that happened over the summer will deter people from coming to Tel Aviv in the future? Actually, the... Res the, the the tragedy of the shootings did make news worldwide, but more importantly to gays and lesbians, the response of the gay and straight community on what happened after the attacks a week later sent such a strong signal that Tel Aviv is welcoming of all people. And when you think of gay and lesbian travelers in their own hometowns, they may be discriminated against, they may have experienced violence in their own lives. The way in which gay and straight Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv residents came to condemn the violence sent a great signal that says you are welcomed here, you will be safe here, and we want your business.